This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of James versus Sutton. Mr. James, it's my understanding you're suing Miss Sutton for injuries that you sustained while you were at a music festival that Miss Sutton put on. You're asking this court to award you $10,000 for your past medical expenses, $5,000 for future medical expenses, $20,000 for lost wages, and $250,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $285,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Miss Sutton, your response to this is very simple. If he had left the music festival when everybody else did, he never would have been hurt, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. What brings you to a music festival? I would recently won a contest via the radio that granted me a ticket along with a backstage pass. Okay. For a meet and greet VIP after the concert had ended. So I drove separately to meet up with my friends and stayed about an hour and a half after the concert before I was preparing to leave. Okay. Now, Miss Sutton, you put on music festivals. Yes. I'm, Tell me about them. Sure. I've been in the music and entertainment industry for over 20 years. We do loads of outdoor festivals. They're always sold out. They're very popular. Um, as a matter of fact, all the radio stations love them. All we kinds of music? With them. Absolutely, all kinds of music. I oversee and I manage all of the logistics of the venue, the artists, the parking, and all the surrounding public areas. So from the piano to the portable toilets, you manage it? Absolutely. Okay, so you're getting all kinds of people, but pretty much some of the things are the same. People have to use the bathroom, right, at Absolutely, a festival? Absolutely, which we provide as a courtesy to our attendees. Okay, you ever had a problem with your portable toilets before? Never. So, Mr. James, tell me how this happened. Well, Your Honor, uh, I was staying after the concert about an hour and a half. As anyone else would, it was granted a backstage pass. I was hanging out with the band, enjoying myself. Had a few drinks, yes, had something to eat. So as I was preparing to make the long ride home, I elected to use the restroom and a portable toilet that was placed right near the parking lot. As I entered the portable toilet um, and attended to my business, I was sitting on the toilet when all of a sudden I heard a truck fire up. Okay. And I noticed you heard the engine of the truck. Yes, sir. That is correct, Your Honor. Okay. Didn't think anything of it at the time. Um, figured they were leaving the premises, doing their job. I noticed it getting closer before I noticed a loud thud. Okay. Immediately knew it was occurring. Um, dreaded the situation as I saw it happening before my eyes. The portable toilet topped backwards, slamming into the ground. I immediately snapped my neck, whipping my head into the ground, which caused the concussion. I was covered in not only human waste, but also this blue chemical from the portable toilet. Head to toe, in my mouth, in my nose. It was mortifying. Uh, if you can only imagine, throughout the entire days of this festival, the entire night, uh, you gotta think, I was one of the last ones there with my backstage pass. The amount so the toilet people, was full. The amount of human traffic that had entered into that toilet before I entered in it. It, it makes me want to throw up just to imagine, as you can see. Constant human traffic in and out of there before I'd entered. That's a lot of folks. That's correct. And a lot of use. That's correct. I have to admit this. There have been times I've been in one of those portable toilets and I see that stuff down there and I say, what if you fell in there? I guess it's no longer hypothetical. This yeah. stuff was all over you. This will be the last time I ever use a portable toilet in my life, Your Honor. So, Miss Sutton, obviously you want folks to use the portable toilet. Yes, of course. H how do you protect against somebody pushing it over and knocking it over? Well, we've never had that incident. And as you can see, they're, they're situated on a level ground. Okay. I wasn't advised of the, in of the situation until about a half hour after it occurred. Although it's very unfortunate that this happened to him. And we're extremely sorry, but we didn't do it. Well, but this isn't his fault. You're not saying this is his fault. He was simply trying to make a deposit, but right? But was Sounds he? Sounds like she is, right? But honor. was he? He was there long after that concert and the festival had ended. So he talked about being there with the band. Uh, why'd you stay so late? No one told me I was supposed to leave the premises, Your Honor. I had no, no one warning me of any time I needed to leave. I had no one warning me that these portable toilets were in danger of using. So, uh, to my knowledge, they were there for the use of the customers, as they always were the entire day. Your well, Honor, doesn't most of the people leaving kind of give you a clue it's time to go? I was enjoying myself. Your Honor, I... It's not every day you win a contest like this, Your Honor. 
Yes, this sir. was, I was using my right However, with this VIP backstage pass. Your Honor, I've submitted yes, as an exhibit our concert schedule. It's our official schedule showing that the concert ended at midnight. Yes, ma'am. Let's take a look and at it. And this gentleman here, this incident took place at 2 a.m. This is the concert call sheet. So people try to stay on schedule with this, right? Yes. So absolutely. 11 p.m. is final set. And then 12 a.m., that is midnight. Yes. Rap strike venue. Is that when folks are supposed to leave? Well, that's about when the meet and greet is, 15 minutes max. Those artists are tired. They played all night long. They do a quick picture of the handful of people that had the backstage pass, and they are out of there on their road. And by 2 o'clock, all my people are gone. It was not two hours after the concert had ended. It was an hour and a half max, just so mm -hmm. we're clear. You do acknowledge, though, that you stayed quite a bit after midnight, right? Not the time, not, not the time frame that she is exhibiting here. That is incorrect. No, that's not true. She's well, lying. what do you remember? How long did you stay? It was an hour and a half max, Your okay, Honor. So and like that, I said, no that one takes had you to one thirty, right? Correct. Okay. Now, is it that weird that people stay an hour and a half, Miss Sutton? Oh, absolutely. Especially because our parking lot was ninety-five percent empty. Well, ninety-five percent means that uh... the other five percent was probably my employees and okay. maybe him and his friends. So, tell me about your injuries. Yes, Your Honor. I, on impact. I suffered whiplash and a severe concussion from my head smacking the ground. Along with being covered with this blue chemical, I was covered in human excrement, which gave me hepatitis A. So some of this stuff got in your mouth and your eyes? That is, I was head to toe, Your Honor. Head to toe, completely covered, and I could not avoid hepatitis A, which has caused my skin and my eyes to turn yellow. Yeah, your, your medical records that you submitted show that you were jaundiced and had quite an infection. That's correct, Your Honor. I've been in severe pain since the incident. Um, aside from the neck brace, the hepatitis A has caused severe liver pain. My eyes, like I said, have been burnt yellow. My urine has turned the color of coffee, Your Honor. Well, your medical records indicate that your internal organs were definitely affected. That's correct. So it sounds like, though, the hepatitis is worse than the whiplash. That's correct, Your Honor. Miss Sutton, a portable toilet getting knocked over, that is an odd event for one of your concerts, correct. right? Correct. And it, but nonetheless, this is not our fault. He should not have been there at this time. It's not your fault. Uh, that's your excuse? That is your excuse. We didn't knock it over. Folks. We have no idea who did it. Well, it happened at your event. Sure. In yeah. one of your portable toilets, he clearly didn't do anything to knock it over. I don't know. Your Honor, who she he needs to take responsibility for this, for we everything that's occurred to me. We have parking attendants directing traffic 45 minutes after the concert ended, and as I stated, that parking lot was 95 percent empty when this happened. Your Honor, I received no verbal, no sign warning that these portable toilets were in any danger of using. Because they weren't. If I had, I would not have used them. You're asking this court to award you a quarter of a million dollars for pain and suffering. What's been the worst part of this? To be honest, I think that quarter of a million is taking it easy. The worst part has been being covered in human excrement with my pants at my ankles. It was the most mortifying moment of my entire life. Mr. James, you mentioned hepatitis A. To understand this disease, this court has consulted Dr. Asma Khalid. Sheriff, will you get Dr. Khalid? Yes, Your Honor. Hello, doctor. Will you please explain the nature of the disease that Mr. James contracted in this accident? Hepatitis A is a virus that's highly contagious. It's usually spread person to person, fecal or route, such as changing dirty diapers or handling contaminated foods. So the liver is located in the upper right quadrant of your abdomen. It's essentially a huge filtration system that takes blood from your body and filters it through the hepatocytes, which are liver cells. Blood passes through, takes foods and nutrients as well as toxins or bacteria and virus. Now the hepatitis A virus passes through the blood, filters through the hepatocytes, but once it's inside the hepatocytes, it infects the liver cells and causes them to become inflamed. They obviously don't handle that very well and you develop some scar tissue, causing the whole liver to become inflamed and enlarged. So why does your skin get yellow? 
it's basically called jaundice. Okay. And just like, you know, a newborn has jaundice and the hepatocytes release uh, a chemical and it basically spreads through your blood, causing your skin to turn yellow. Doctor, thank you. You are released. Thank you. Your Honor, I can say with 100% confidence that Miss Sutton is 100% responsible for what happened to me. Mr. James, how do you know that one of Miss Sutton's employees hit this portable toilet? Your Honor, I have a diagram to explain how the incident occurred in the parking lot. All right, well, let's put your diagram up on the plasma. You submitted that to the court. Why don't you go over and show me how you think this happened? Upon entering the portable toilet, that these two trucks were placed right here okay. before entering. As I did, I heard this truck fire up and then immediately begin to reverse back towards me. How did you know it was in reverse? Circumstantial evidence, The beep, Your and Honor. I could tell it was getting close to me, Your Honor. This is here. Okay. It got louder and louder. So that backup beep got closer to you? Correct. All right. And it was before I could even put it together that all of a sudden, it hit this portable toilet, knocked it on its back, in which then I slammed into the ground following it. This is and all immediately circumstantial. Was being covered. Immediately was covered with human He has wits. absolutely no proof that it was one of my trucks or a truck now, at all. Now, but hold on for a minute. These trucks weren't concert goers, right? No. They were production. This wasn't a trucker's convention. My production trucks were parked out in front, but towards closing, they began to leave. So I kicked my way out, almost like my own coffin, Your Honor, covered in this waist, managed to pull my pants up and realize the truck was completely gone off the premises. Now, for the record, Miss Sutton, all six of these trucks that were on that diagram are your production trucks, right? Correct. Driven by your employees, correct? Correct. For all 20 years, we've been doing this and never had an issue. That's hearsay. You cannot have him have that photo in there. He has no idea that was one of our trucks. I'm confident, Your Honor. Like I said, I distinctly remember two trucks being placed in front of the portable toilets. As I exited it, there was only one. You can return to the podium. You keep throwing ar around the term circumstantial evidence. Yes, because he's, he's giving us evidence that he says, I know for a fact without a fact. Well, let me tell you about evidence. In a courtroom, there are really two kinds of evidence. There's direct evidence and then circumstantial evidence. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that circumstantial evidence is of a weaker, less reliable source. It is not. Circumstantial evidence is direct evidence that indicates a certain fact. For example, if a person walks through the snow and you see them walk through the snow, you can testify, I saw someone walk through the snow. That's direct evidence. However, if you go to that same snow and you see my size 13 footprints all the way up to my motorcycle and I'm sitting on the right. motorcycle, that's circumstantial evidence right. that I walked through the snow. They are of there equal value. There is no proof that I did. We have a natural barrier of our trucks placed out so no accidents like this would happen. Natural, there was no natural barrier. There was no verbal, no sign warning me of any danger using these. Park in front of the portable toilets to act as a shield, preventing anything to interfere with them. I was covered in literal human <laughs> because of her, Your Honor. Be human waste and this blue chemical. Be careful about your language. I understand what you're covered with, but we got to call it a different name. Oh. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. When I was a young lawyer, I used to think that lawsuits were simple, particularly personal injury lawsuits, because all the plaintiff has to prove is that someone did something wrong, that is, you'd have to prove Ms. Sutton did something wrong, or one of her employees, and that their wrong caused your injury. Hardly ever does it turn out to be simple in the many cases I presided over. But this one is simple. You're responsible for your employee's actions under a doctrine called respondeat superior. It simply means that the master must answer for the actions of the servant. Here, if your driver backed into that portable toilet, you pay the bill. Let's look at the evidence. We don't have direct evidence of who backed into this portable toilet, but the circumstantial evidence is this. While you're sitting in this portable toilet, you hear a truck engine fire up. Correct. That's a very distinct sound. You then hear the beeping, the reverse safety signal of the truck backing up and it's getting closer to you. And your portable toilet flips over and so does your life. That circumstantial evidence is superior weight of who backed into this portable toilet. I am convinced it was one of your employees that backed into this toilet.
And because of that, I find in your favor, and I'm going to give you everything that you ask for. I'm awarding you $10,000 for your past medicals, $5,000 for your future medicals, $20,000 for your lost wages, and $250,000 for your pain and suffering for a total award for you and against the defendant for $285,000. That's my final award, and this matter is adjourned. Thank you, Ron. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Hoyt Tessner has to say. Here, Judge Gino cites the legal principle of responding at superior. This Latin phrase means the employer is responsible for his employee. There was no direct evidence that the employee backed into the portable toilet, but there was circumstantial evidence. The law considers circumstantial and direct evidence the same. Plaintiff saw the truck, went into the toilet, heard the truck engine start, followed by impact. Afterwards, no truck. 